Now for this next part, we're asked to find the times when the ball is 33.6 meters then above O. So let's just mark in that point here, let's say where we've got 33.6 meters. Let's say it's a point here then. Now the ball's going to come up here and let's say at time T1 it's at this point and then it's going to go to a maximum height and then come back down and at a second time T2 it's going to be at 33.6 meters. T1 and T2 are those times. So to do something like this we need to set up again those equations uh, or the variables for the equations of motion down here for constant acceleration. Our SUVAT variables, S U V A and T. We also need a positive sense, and because we initially projected this upwards, let's take upwards as being positive. So, do we know S, the displacement from O? Yes, we do. It's 33.6. U, well I've updated this with the initial velocity that we found in part A, 28, 28 meters per second. As for V, V would be the speed, or I should say the final velocity that the particle, the ball in this case, passes through this point here, 33.6 meters up from O. We don't know what V is, so we'll just ignore that. A, the acceleration. It's acting downwards in the opposite sense to our positive direction, so it's going to be minus 9.8. And t, well, t is the time that we're trying to find. There'll be two times, so we can expect a quadratic equation, I would have thought. So t is what we're trying to find. So which one of these equations here would we want to use? It would be the one that leaves out v. So when we look at the ones down through here, it's got to be s equals ut plus a half at squared. It leaves out v. So if we use that equation, let's come over here, using s equals ut plus a half at squared, then what we've got is that therefore s, the displacement, is 33.6 equals u, which is 28, multiplied by t, plus a half times the acceleration, which is minus 9.8, times t squared. So if we clean this up, we've got a quadratic equation coming out. This is going to cancel. We can say 2 into the minus 9.8 goes minus 4.9 times. So we've got a quadratic equation in t, as expected. That's why we're going to have our two values, t1 and t2. So I'm going to add 4.9t squared to both sides and also subtract 28t from both sides. So that would give us 4.9t squared minus 28t plus the 33.6 and that equals zero. Now I kind of sense that this is going to be a quadratic equation that will factorize fairly well. Now you could use the quadratic formula at this point. You could say that t equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where a is the 4.9, b is the minus 28, and c is 33.6. But I do suspect that this will factorize. And I'm going to make these into whole numbers first of all by timesing through by 10. So we get 49t squared minus 280t plus 336 equals 0. And now if I divide by 7 throughout, I'm going to get 7t squared here minus 40t and then 336 divided by 7 gives us 48. So it goes quite cleanly into that. Now, does it factorize? The guess is, as I say, that it will do. So we've got a couple of brackets here. It's good that we've got a prime number here, 7. So that's going to be 7t and t. 
and for the 48 it's going to be minus 12 and minus 4 yes that's going to work minus 12 and minus 4 that will equal 0 check it out 70 squared minus 28t minus another 12t is minus 40t and then you've got your plus 48 on the end so that means that therefore each of these factors must equal 0 so we've got 7t minus 12 equals 0 or t minus 4 equals 0 and that's going to give us t equals 12 over 7 if we add 12 to both sides and then divide by 7 or t equals 4 so there's the two times okay let's just put the units in seconds we'll put a little s there for seconds so that's the two times then where that ball is 33.6 meters above O. The 12 sevenths obviously is the T1 on the way up and it reaches its maximum height and on the way back down T2 is 4 seconds. Okay.